Bible says that Daniel is a six, uh, uh, sets himself up to pray. And as he's praying, the Bible says that on the uh, after praying for a certain amount of time, 21 days, on the 24th day, an angel appears to him. And the angel tells him, from the first day you set yourself to pray, I was sent by God to give you an answer. But the prince of Persia, the principality, the ruler, demonic ruler over the, the region of Persia, he withstood me. And we stood me for 21 days until I had to call for help, Michael the archangel, to come and deal with that principality. And ladies and gentlemen, we are principalities and powers. When we see politicians fighting and arguing and 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 confusion in the pre, in the political realm, it is not about the leaders. It's a principality. It is a spirit that needs to be confronted in the realm of the spirit. And you need to rise up in prayer and begin to take authority against those uh, spirits and principalities. Uh, when you see coronavirus, uh, it's, it's a disease. It's a demonic spirit from the pit of hell. And we need to engage and take authority in the, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Jesus told us in the book of John chapter 14, John chapter 14, going from verse 12, going down, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus, he told us through his word that he will do through us greater works than he even did. The church is not supposed to be a little club where people gather just to have a, to feel good and to have a wonderful time singing wonderful songs and, and dancing around. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the church is supposed to be a place where the greater works of Jesus are manifested where the, the power of God is released and where there's a, there's a release of the glory of God. And the church then should then arise and go to the world, go to the nations and show and manifest the power of God. That is the will of God. And then he continues saying, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified. And then verse 14 says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray that the Father, and he will give you another comforter, another paracletos, that he may abide with you. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he will dwell with you, and he shall be in you. Jesus was giving us a promise. And he was saying, you shall do greater works than I did. You shall do greater things. And that is where the church of Jesus Christ, that is the kind of prayer we need to be praying. Oh God, release glory. Release power. Lord, the greater works that you talked about, we want to see them in our time and in our generation. That is a prayer we should be praying. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, Jesus told the disciples, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the responsibility of being witnesses of the power of God. Testifying of what God is able to do. And Jesus said, greater works than this. We, we, we have settled for, for just being, you know, nice Christian people. That is not what God intends for in this day. He is intending that he, he may move in a greater way. And I was sharing with the church on Sunday. That myself, I'm in, I'm in Acts 4.33, in this hour of, of fasting and prayer. That is where I am. The Bible says in the book of Acts uh, 4.33, uh, that with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection, to the, uh, to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus with great power. And grace, grace was upon all of them. And ladies and gentlemen, with great power, we need to see and to, to manifest the, the, the glory of God. And a church that settles down to just enough is not what God had in mind. We are supposed to see uh, nations shifting. We are supposed to see the healed being sick. Uh, so, uh, the sick being healed. Excuse me. Oh God. I know the healed being sick. But the sick being healed. We are supposed to see the, the pouring of the glory of God more than ever before. And ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, I will send the spirit. He's the spirit of supplication. And he's the spirit of power. And he will release intercession through us. So that we can begin to see the hedge being repaired and the glory of God being seen in our time and in our day. Now, I want to talk to us today a little bit on how do we fulfill our prayer mandate. How do we fulfill our prayer mandate? Number one, true intercession. 
it first of all, number one, I involves identification. The first thing we have to do is that we have to identify. We have to identify with the people that are going through problems and are going through struggles. You cannot effectively go to the prayer closet and pray and intercede for people who you are who you are separated or divorced from, or you who don't you don't feel the weight of their issues uh, as you ought to. As our high priest and intercessor, Christ has identified with us by taking upon himself, he took upon himself the form of, of flesh and blood, and he left the glories of heaven and the glories of his father, and he became one of us. He became one of us. Why? So that he can identify with our pain. He can identify with our situations. The Bible says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He was at all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And ladies and gentlemen, the reason why he is a faithful, merciful high priest is because he feels our infirmities. And therefore, he is qualified to intercede on our behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, as we stand in the place of intercession, we must be willing to identify with those of whom we are interceding for. We must be willing to carry their burden and identify with them. Take our bur their burdens upon ourselves. Be willing to feel their pain and their sorrow so that as we, pre we can present their needs before God as our own. It is not just enough to say, oh God, save my brother. Oh God, save my sister. Oh God, save the world. As an intercessor is standing in the gap, you must identify. You must be willing to carry their burden as if you are the one who is going through what they are going through. You see, our sometimes the way we pray for people, it lacks the passion of identification. It lacks the passion of identification. We are just praying nicely, oh God, the youth need you, but we need to be able to come to the shoes of the young people, feel their pain, feel their desperation. And some of us, the reason why God has allowed us to go through some of the issues that we are going through is so that we can know how it feels to go through some stuff. You, uh, some of you have had a season where you're lacking. You don't have food on the table. And, and, and the thing about it is, it's not that God has withheld it because he, he wants you necessarily to suffer. But it's so that you can be able to feel the pain sometimes of people who, when, when they're going through what it is that they're going through, and be able to identify with them. And sometimes we are so divorced, we are so far removed from the problems of the people. We need to ask God, God, touch me with the things that touch you. Help me carry the burden of my generation. Lord, help me be able to identify with those young people who are burning their schools. Help me be able to come to that place like Jesus did and be able to identify and feel their pain so that as I come and groan and moan and travail before you, I am not divorced. I am not far away from their pain and from their situation. I have, I have seen that the, the greatest effective way to pray for somebody is to be able to come down to their level and really identify with what it is that they are going through. You need to do that. It's, it's, it's one of the most powerful things you can ever do. To, to come out of your high horse of judging and, and feeling like, you know, I know better than them. And really just come down to their level and be able to pray and to stand in the gap for them. I promise you, you'll be so effective. Because the, the way to intercede, number one, is to identify, feel their pain, be, be willing to feel your pain. What has happened today is that the church has separated itself and isolated itself from the lost. We are so far removed from their needs. We are so far removed from, from, from their needs. 